Hello everyone, George here, and in this video we're finally going to get to the important thing, and that is creating a camera calibration matrix. From the last several videos, we've done quite a bit. We've created our known board positions, we've done our get chessboard corners, and we created a function which continually loops over and brings in our webcam information and then draws the checkerboard that it detects on top of it. Now, we're going to create a generic method called calibrate camera, which we're going to call and use many times in the future on subsequent videos, but for right now, Let's just get this basic camera calibration video down. So the function is very simple. Uh, the camera calibration function will take in images that have already been validated as providing good information for camera calibration. That is the checkerboard can be found. So let's go ahead and create it. We're gonna do a void camera calibration. It's going to take in a vector of matte objects, which are going to be the images, the calibration images that we want to use. Then we're going to need the size, which is the board size, which is, you know, how many by how many on that checkerboard. Then we need the float square edge length. And that's the length of one of the square sides on the checkerboard, the real length that you measure with a ruler or calipers. Then we need two references. One is to the camera matrix that we're going to actually be populating. And then the other one is to our distance coefficients. All right, so first we need a vector of vectors. And these are the same thing we did down here in main where we were grabbing vectors of vectors whenever we detected stuff. So let's go ahead and do a vector of vectors and they're going to be point two Fs. Why are they two Fs? Because these are the points we detect on the calibration image and the image is two dimensional. Hence why it's a two F and not a three F. Yeah, let's do checkerboard image space points. That's a long name, but it's great. Next, we're going to do our function that we created in the other video called get chessboard corners. We're gonna pass in this vector of images and it's gonna retrieve for us all of the different uh, points that it finds that make up the checkerboard. So let's do a get chessboard corners, chessboard, checkerboard, same thing, calibration images. And we're gonna pass in our checkerboard image space points, which is what gets populated with all that stuff. And then finally, we don't wanna see the output, so we say false. Next up, we need to create our known board positions, but we need to do that for every single one of the images we have. So we're gonna create another vector of vectors, so vector of vectors, and that's gonna be a point 3F, because if you remember correctly, these are the points in the, in the real world, the world space coordinates. So we'll do world space corner points, and we want that to be of size one, because the first time we're gonna populate it with uh, the output of our create known board position function that we created a few videos back. Now we'll call that function create known board position and we're going to pass in the board size, the square edge length, and the world space corner points, but the first element and we created of size one, so that's what our first element is. Nope, that is a zero. There we are. Perfect. And now we're going to resize this entire matrix and copy those values over for every single one. And we're going to do that by calling world space corner points dot resize and we are going to make it the size of the number of images we actually have and then of course that is the number of points two-dimensional points we have and we are going to fill it with what we have in the zeroth element right there so that will reduplicate that over and over and over again so we have a relationship between whatever the checkerboard stuff was the two-dimensional points and the three-dimensional points that we expect okay now we need to hold a vector of matte objects. These are going to be our radial vectors and our tangential vector vectors, so let's do that. Then we need our distance coefficients, so distance coefficients is going to be equal to a zero matrix, so matte colon colon zeros. That's going to be of size 8 by 1, and it's going to be of type CV underscore 64F. Great. And now that we've done all that, literally, it's this simple. Calibrate camera. We're gonna pass in our world space corner points that we've calculated. We're gonna pass in our camera matrix. We're gonna pass in our checkerboard image space points. Now our board size, and then our camera matrix, which gets populated by the function, as well as our distance coefficients, which, gets, which also gets populated, and our R vex and our T vex, our tangential vectors as well and the magic of OpenCV will occur, and so long as we provided good images, we'll get a valid camera calibration matrix that we can start using for more interesting projects in the future.
Now we need to try this thing out, but at the moment we have no way of capturing that camera information and then calibrating it. We're going to use what we had ended with last time where we were storing the character that the user presses or we wait until of course the key is done in some amount of time. And we're going to use this to basically determine whether or not we're going to save an image. If we see a valid checkerboard, we're going to save it out by pressing the space key. If we want to start camera calibration, so long as we have enough images, like 10 or 15, we'll use the enter key. And then finally, if we screwed everything up, we're going to use the escape key to get out of it. So let's go ahead and implement that. That's going to be done with a switch statement. So switch, and that's going to be on the character itself. So we'll do case colon and we'll do the space for the space key. And in here, we're going to be doing our saving of the image put a break in there. The next case we're going to do is our case. And these ones, of course, are going to be integer values because they don't have, uh, you know, character values. 13, which is our enter key. And that's also going to be a break. And when we do enter, we're actually going to start calibration. So start calibration. And then finally case and 27, which is the escape key. So we'll do exit the program. And that's going to be another break right there course when we exit all we're going to do for that is return out of this main method which is a return zero for starting calibration we're just going to call our camera calibration method so let's do camera calibration within that we're going to do our saved images if you don't remember we created this variable in the last video right here this is where we're going to store all those images right now it's empty obviously until we implement saving right here the expectation is we're going to pass in all those images we're going to do our chessboard dimensions we're going to do our calibration square dimension finally our camera matrix which is blank at the moment and then of course our distance coefficients once again check back to the prior video to find out how that's wrong that's the camera matrix there we are once again if you don't know where these came from check back in the prior video where we set up all these variables as you can see right here but before we do camera calibration, we should probably check to see that we have enough valid images. In general, it's recommended that you have at least 10. We're going to do 15 because I don't know about you. I might have bad luck, but I never find that 10 does a very good job. So let's do this and we'll do this because who never knows when we'll implement more stuff here in the future. So whenever we press the space key, we're going to save that image. Remember, this is the simplest way to do this. Ultimately, all we're trying to do is get that camera matrix out of this after we've seen images we like. So first, we need to see whether or not we actually found anything, because if we didn't, there's no point in saving. So if found, once again, found is up here. Next up, we're going to create a matte temp object, and then we're going to, of course, copy over the current frame to that object. So copy to, and let's do temp. Then we're going to save this out, so we have our saved images function, or a we have our saved images variable up here, our vector of mad objects. So we're going to push that onto it. And we're going to push temp onto it. Now there's really not a whole lot for us to see with this. So why don't we go ahead and push this information out in this video so that we have a text file that we can work with. We're going to create a new function called save camera calibration. It's going to return true or false. It's going to take in a name that you want to call the file. It's going to take in the actual matrix as well as the distance coefficients. And all we're going to do is create some streams and push all this information out. And then that way, at least we can look at this thing. So let's do bool save camera calibration. Let's do string. We're going to have a name for the file, a mat object or, or that we're going to pass in, which is our matrix. And then of course, our distance coefficients. Next up, we're going to create an OF stream and call that out stream. And we're going to use the name for that stream. If we have returned a stream, if we have a stream, then we're going to do the following. We are going to push out some general information such as the number of rows and columns. So uint 16 underscore t unsigned integer of size 16. Rows is going to be equal to camera matrix dot rows. And we're going to do a uint 16 underscore t columns is equal to camera matrix dot columns. Why are we doing this? Just so that we have the data and information there. And if we ever needed to recreate this, it's all within that file. We can read it. We know the rows are there, the columns are there. We can populate it all by itself and we're good to go. 
Now we're going to do a double for loop for the rows and columns to push out each element. We're gonna do a four, and then another for loop. There we are. And then we're going to do a int r is equal to zero. R is less than the number of rows we have, and then R plus plus. Next up, we're going to do int C is equal to zero, C is less than columns, and then C plus plus. We're now going to take the value out of our camera matrix, which by the way is a 64-bit value, if you remember from before, and we're going to put it within our temporary variable here, value. At is of course a double and then we're gonna pass in the row and column as we iterate over it. Once again, if you don't know what I'm doing here, please look at one of my earlier OpenCV videos where I talk about iterating over mat objects. Next up, we're gonna actually push this thing out to the stream, so out stream, value, and we're gonna end that line. Next up, we're gonna grab the number of rows from our distance coefficients. So rows and columns is equal to distance coefficients dot columns. Great, and we're gonna push all this stuff out as well. Literally, we're gonna copy this loop up here, paste it here, and instead of it being our camera matrix, it's gonna be our distance coefficients. Once again, just pushing everything out that we need. Finally, because we're good people, we're gonna close our stream, and we're gonna return true, because this was successful. And we're gonna return false right here. All right, so now all we need to do is actually call this method. So down here in start calibration, once we're finished with that, we're gonna do our save calibration and we're gonna pass in our values. So we're gonna put in our string. I'm just gonna call this, I love camera calibration. You should call it something better than that. Then we're gonna pass in our camera matrix and we're gonna pass in our distance coefficients. Once again, these values that we have coming out will only be as good as the images you provided. I'm gonna fast forward ahead so you don't have to watch all this stuff, and uh, I'll show you the text document that gets output soon enough. All right, so if we did a great job, we can go over here to our OpenCV project, right click, and go to our open folder in File Explorer, and we have our I love camera calibration file, which has no extension, and if we take a look here, we have our camera calibration values, as you can see right there. Great, so that's how you produce your camera calibration matrix. If you like the video, give it a like. If you don't, give it a dislike, and of course, always comment below. Otherwise, if you want more content like this, always remember to subscribe, and I will see you all next time.